I hope they'll be writing up my diary. Mrs Proctor's got us all keeping diaries as part of literary appreciation. The other girls can't think what to put in theirs. Me, I can't think what to leave out. Trouble is, not enough time to write it up. I'm three days behind as it is. I am that busy. In the mornings, we have occupation and I've opted for bookbinding and dressmaking. In dressmaking, Mrs Dunlop's shot me writing at the deep end and I'm running up a little cocktail dress. I said I never have cocktails. She said, well, now you've got a dress you can. <laughs> so this place is all geared up for. New horizons. It's, it's in Shantung with a, with a little shawl collar. Lucille's making me a chunky necklace for it in handicrafts. <laughs> I'm sharing a room with someone called Bridget. She's from Glasgow. She was a prostitute on and off and uh, she did away with her kiddie accidentally when, when she were drunk and upset. But such a bonny face, you'd never think it. Her mother was blind, but she made beautiful pastry and she raised a family of nine in three rooms. You don't know you're born, I think. Now, I'm friends with practically everyone besides Bridget. I am up and down that corridor. Sometimes I'm still doing me rounds when the bell goes. <laughs> they laugh at me. I know they do, but it's all in good part. Lucille says to me, You're so funny, you Irene. You don't seem to mind being in prison. <laughs> I said, prison? I said, Lucille, this is the first taste of freedom I've had in years. <laughs> oh, I'm the lucky one, though, because uh, they all miss that. Men, men, men. That's all they talk about. Talk about nothing else. Mind you, that's not quite the clothes book it used to be. Bridget has taken me through the procedure step by step. And previous, if I'd ever found myself in bed with a man, then I'd have been like a fish out of water. But, but now, as Bridget says, at least I know the rudiments. I can't see me ever needing that, not at my age. But, you know, it's another string to your bow.